Welcome back to Markets. Today our main topic is uh, the Monetary Policy Committee meeting, which we'll be having an in-depth analysis in just a bit. My guest is uh, Charles Miano from Nava Capitals, who's an analyst. A very good evening to you. Good evening. Thank All you. All right. Uh, before we dive into the MPC, let's take a look at uh, the closing numbers today. Maybe have a small discussion on that. Yeah, okay. uh, starting off by looking at the day's closing numbers yeah. this evening. Now, there's a visible pump up when it comes to the indices. What may have caused this? Um, so we saw a drastic increase um, this time around today. Mm -hmm. uh, we saw uh, build up, especially when you look at the market cap mm -hmm. and uh, the market turnover, especially. Mm -hmm. uh, we saw the market uh, turnover build up to upwards of 45 billion mm -hmm. um, from a uh, uh, mega 80, uh, 85 million mm -hmm. yesterday. Mm -hmm. So what drives it, especially, is the drive by foreign investors. Mm. So yesterday, uh, to note, was a memorial day in Africa, mm -hmm. as well as the bank holiday in the UK. Mm -hmm. So the market was quite uh, muted. Uh, so this time around, we saw a net uh, foreign buying. About 87% of the uh, market activity was driven by foreigners. And we did see foreigners come in and buy uh, stock when it came to Safaricom. Mm -hmm. um, when it came to EABL, when it came to KCB as well as equity, and then we saw foreign selling on cooperative bank. So it's a nice show to the market uh, as opposed to what we've, uh, what we've seen in the beginning of quarter two. Mm -hmm. So just to give you some stats where we are in terms of the NASI. Mm -hmm. uh, so the NASI, the first quarter, that's from December, from January all the way to the end of March, mm -hmm. about the NASI was around 12.2%. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, from March all the way to today, actually, it's down about 4%. Mm -hmm. So all in all, the market from a NASI perspective or the all share perspective is about 8% uh, eight, uh, eight yeah, yeah. Uh, up. So it shows you that quarter two has had some pressures, but it's sort of like a reversal today where we're seeing more interest in the stock on uh, the bigger uh, stocks in the oh, market. All right. Yeah. All right, I want us to go back to Safaricom that traded uh, 28 million shares. Yeah. Yeah, in, uh, like, give us a proper in-depth analysis on why the, the shares uh, stood at 28 million. So Safaricom has the advantage of being part of the MSCI um, or the Morgan Stanley Composite Index. So this is an index, um, especially the MSCI Africa Index, mm -hmm. so or the, uh, as well as the frontier markets. Mm -hmm. So it's one of the uh, only stocks within East Africa that is actually incorporated there. Mm -hmm. So whenever we see foreign buys, it's one of the most uh, liquid stocks. And also with more money coming in from foreigners, Typically, it's one of the sto key stocks that you'll see more movement. Mm. So no wonder we saw such a huge influx, mm -hmm. especially in that particular stock, as well as the other more liquid shares that we have. So right. that MSCI money uh, contributes significantly, in my opinion. All right. Yeah. All right. Which makes a lot of sense. Now, yeah. what, um, what should an investor look, um, look uh, into as the week rolls out? I think uh, what you have to be keen on is looking at the pricing. So relatively where where your interest lies for example if you're a long-term investor some of these stocks we say are preferably um cheaper relative to where they've traded at especially in the first quarter and and relative to historical mm -hmm. um so if you're looking at a long-term investor it could be a nice time to buy and also if you're looking to sell off, given the interest that we're seeing on the buying side or the buying pressure, then it could be a nice way for you to get out of the market. So it depends which side you are in and what your outlook is. But uh, we expect to see more activity in the coming days. All right. Yeah. All right. I would like us to shift gears. Now, shifting gears to the report from the Monetary Policy Committee, yeah. uh, the lending rate has remained at 9%, and this is for the eighth time. Yeah. Um, um, kindly on, expound on this. Yeah, so what we've seen is since September 2016, mm -hmm. uh, we've seen a drastic movement or a drastic change in the thought, uh, thought policy in regard to the NPR uh -huh. or even the CBR, uh, the NPR, uh, the MPC, as well as their look on the CBR. Mm -hmm. Now, CBR is more connected towards uh, the lending rate. Yes. And, um, and what we've seen so far is they maintained it at 9%. 
and uh, we've had three monetary policy meetings this this year mm -hmm. um, the latest being yesterday mm -hmm. and they maintained it or held it at nine percent so this is driven largely by inflation expectations mm -hmm. remaining within the band mm -hmm. so our band is 2.5 to 7.5 percent so inflation came in, uh, it ticked up quite a bit, a 19-month high mm -hmm. to about 6.6% 6 .6 uh, in April uh, mm -hmm. from 4.4% driven largely by increase in food uh, prices, mm -hmm. especially on the vegetable side where we saw the food inflation tick up, uh, which if you look at food inflation itself going up close to 77 to 7.9% mm -hmm. from about 4 or so percent mm -hmm. so largely that is the case but the expectation is despite what we're seeing in pressure in regard to insufficient rainfall mm -hmm. um, we should see inflation remain within the bond mm -hmm. so that should help uh, that should at least anchor inflation properly because the main thing for uh, central bank mainly is to maintain price stability mm -hmm. and in addition to that it's a tax stability so we've seen the Kenya shilling against the dollar remain relatively uh, stable over the last five months. Mm -hmm. And largely because of uh, uh, huge foreign, uh, foreign reserves or international foreign reserves. Uh, so the central bank governor, Patrick Kinjoroga, did mention that we're all-time high, about 10.05, yeah, 10 give or take, a billion. Uh, dollars which equates to about 6.4 months import cover. Mm -hmm. So in the short term we're well buffered mm -hmm. and that sort of gives confidence to the MPR and uh, the MPC to re retain the rate. All right I want us to go back to banking uh, to the 9% lending rate. Yeah. So what does this mean for banking institutions? You know, all the all the shareholders, all the, all the stock stakeholders, yes. when it comes to matters um, borrowing or lending money. So the nine percent mm -hmm. is now stagnant mm -hmm. uh, for the eighth time. Mm -hmm. So what does this mean for banking institutions? What does it mean for the borrowers? And lastly, lastly, what does it mean for the economy? Okay. Um, so as we just uh, give a f um, framework of where it is. So the lending rate is nine percent. The CBR plus four percent. So yes. Right now, it's at thirteen percent. Uh, the deposit, fl uh, the deposit flow that was there was removed. So the only uh, restrictions on the lending. Mm -hmm. So I think what happens right now is lending continues as usual. So we did see a uh, drastic. Which is quite low. Yeah, which is quite low. Yeah. Uh, it was mentioned in the MP, uh, in the poly in the press release that it's about four point nine percent for the month of April, which is a thirty-six month high, mm. thirty-two month high, about thirty-two months, thirty-six month high. Um, since September 2016, 16, when, when we the saw the, the uh, rates come, the the come into place. In, yeah. So what we're seeing now is the fact that, yes, lending is in, uh, improving mm -hmm. from a low of about even, it was low of about lower 2% mm -hmm. in about mid-2017. Mm -hmm. So it's improved, but it's not where uh, where the CBK will target. Uh, mm. The central bank governor mentioned the pr uh, in the press release today, preferably it will be between around 8% mm -hmm. would that be the preferable uh, private sector credit growth. Mm -hmm. And in line with that, the CBK um, has come up with a program with about six banks yeah. named Stawi. Yes. Um, so, um, so the idea there is to lend to uh, MS, MS, MEs, basically the micro, the small and medium yeah. term enterprises and to lend to them at 9%, which is lower than even the 13%. So right now they're in a two week pilot program. Mm -hmm. It was launched last week on yeah. Monday. Yeah. So with that, we could see some pick up in lending, but I don't think things will drastically change, but mm -hmm. I believe things will continue as usual. So just to, just, just to get this straight, Charles, mm -hmm. the Re regardless, the fact that the lending has gone up by to four percent, mm. which you've said this is a thirty-six, thirty-six, yeah, about 32, 36 32 36 to a thirty-six month high. Yeah. Still, we are not in a good place when it comes to lending. Yeah. But uh, star, we might come in and save the day. Um, to the extent, I don't think it'll drastically uh, change the game. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at what they are planning to do, they're planning to enroll about three thousand five hundred SME, yes. SMEs and lend yeah. them. Uh, uh, amount uh, lend them um, then within a two week 
uh, period and then lend to another 10,000 uh, MS, MS, mm -hmm. MS, MS, MSMEs. Mm -hmm. So that amounts maybe to about maybe 50,000 to maybe around 500,000 mm -hmm. uh, shillings in quantum in which they can borrow. Mm -hmm. So I don't think drastically that will change or uh, uh, move the ticker, but mm -hmm. I think it's a step in the right direction mm -hmm. uh, because what we're seeing is the markets or the businesses are craving for growth mm -hmm. and growth can only be sustained at the moment, uh, ideally with credit and credit is starved or they're starved of credit given the fact that banks are more, uh, they're more risk averse and they'll prefer to, uh, to lend to government as opposed mm -hmm. to the more risky uh, businesses. All right. Now, um, Away from that, the governor also spoke of the bank's margin, mm. and he supported the move, saying that this strengthens the sector, the banking sector. What are your sentiments in this? Um, yeah, I think, I think the banking sector in general, what's noticeable is the tier one banks yeah. and some of the tier twos have actually become more profitable than they were pre-2016 or pre-2016 when the interest rate cap came into place. Mm -hmm. So they've been able to diversify their income mm -hmm. from interest income, which is largely where they derive uh, income from loans as well as government securities, mm -hmm. and diversified it across to where you're earning from fees and commissions, uh, uh, from FX-related income, from mobile banking yeah. being an option in which you can earn money. But we're seeing struggling entities within the tier three sides, and that's why you've seen a significant uh, number of sort of takeovers of some of the tier three banks, especially in the last two and a half years. Yeah. And therefore, yes, we see it might prop up uh, the sector, but I think it will largely be concentrated on the tier ones as well as a number of tier twos, uh, mm. while the tier three will still remain uh, struggling as mm. long as we have the interest rate cap in place and mm. uh, it reduces that margin. Okay, yeah. so does the margin mean uh, better services to the common monanchi? Um, I, I think drastically where banks are shifting, where we're seeing a shift is if you're lending at the same rate um, and deposit rates are almost similar, where you're seeing it, banks are shifting is towards improving customer experience, right? Mm -hmm. um, so customer experience being where, how do I feel, how do, uh, what's the convenience, yeah. what's the efficiency? Mm -hmm. So if banks are able to sort of concentrate on that aspect, which I think is beyond the margin itself, mm -hmm. um, then you, some of the banks could see, come out as winners, especially in the customer experiences aspect. Mm -hmm. But again, I don't think it'll be a significant game changer. All right. Yeah. Now, the, as the governor was speaking today, he did mention mobile lending applications mm -hmm. that have not been put that have been put on the spot because some of them are sharing customer information yeah. Yeah? yeah so that could lead to them being dissolved what is the best way to actually regulate this mobile lending applications i think uh, that's a good question and it's a difficult question mm -hmm. um i think what we're seeing is th the landscape has completely changed especially after the interest rate cap where mm -hmm. as i mentioned earlier um credit most of the businesses are are starved of credit and yeah. also not businesses but personal households. Mm. So legislating some of these businesses might prove to be difficult mm -hmm. um, because some of them are charging uh, uh, almost uh, excess rates, you mm -hmm. might say, or usury uh, mm -hmm. rates. Mm -hmm. um, but again, um, because they know they're dealing with people who are desperate for the money. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And the competition has actually increased. You, yeah. If you look at your mobile money platform, as simple as going to your Google yeah. or your Apple store and you're the seeing download, the, number, yeah. the number of platforms that are coming up that can offer you lending uh, and the sort of the number of downloads that you're seeing significantly. So there is demand for this credit. Um, and maybe the question is, if you curtail this, where will people actually go? And will these businesses be profitable at the end of it? Because at the one side, these businesses have to get, they're getting the money to give you or the money you, that you're lending be, because they're borrowing, but they're borrowing at significantly higher rates. Mm -hmm. They're borrowing at higher rates and then lending to you at even higher rates mm -hmm. to create a margin. So if you curtail that, we might see many of these businesses uh, fall off and therefore it could be drastically uh, shift the market, but I think largely what we need to do is improve credit scoring. 
so we need a system where um, there's better monitoring of credit mm -hmm. where if you default in one platform at least there is some transparency in the other platform that you cannot obtain this so mm -hmm. once you start improving on those on those basics mm -hmm. then i think we'll see sort of an improvement in the order all right and now moving on the cbk governor also mentioned that uh, kenya's economic growth um, will be slowed by 0 0.4 points now what would what do you ascribe this to um, the fact that our economic growth may actually go on a slowdown i think largely i think it's in line with even what um, the world bank in april um, reduced the expectation for 2019 mm -hmm. to about 5.8 percent initially then they reduced it to about 5.7 percent mm -hmm. Uh, the government has it about so if uh, the reduction could be a factor especially when it comes to the rains and the agricultural output being mm -hmm. uh, part of it i think uh, we're expecting long rains especially within the march uh delayed to mm. a bit april we saw some rains but not significantly they're not too. consistent exactly yeah. yeah and it's been consistent all through and we've seen some parts of the county struggling quite a bit mm -hmm. in regard to food uh, and some of them actually seeking food aid, right? So I think the agricultural output might not be as significant. Therefore, we could see uh, uh, some heat when it comes to our, our, ex our exports. Mm -hmm. And therefore, if we see that fall in output, that will drastically uh, uh, affect uh, our economic output in general. Therefore, mm -hmm. I think that 0.4% can be ascribed to that particular um, point. It all comes down to our agricultural produce. I believe so. All right. Yeah. Now, um, last but not least, now th there was a statement on Kenya's debt where the governor was particular on Kenya reorganizing mm. its debt to create room for more borrowing. Yeah. Could we uh, have an in-depth on what exactly he means? Um, I think what you notice is it's not just applies in Kenya but all across. I think there's been an issue in regard to um, the government borrowing in order to refinance, right? Uh, but I believe refinancing most, if you look at many um, states across the world, not just limited to Africa, mm -hmm. um, they do borrow in order to refinance the debt. Mm -hmm. So Kenya, we saw them borrowing 2.1 billion in May uh, in two tranches. And uh, so borrowing that part of that uh, amount was to, uh, to pay back the, uh, the euro bond that is maturing in June yeah, of yeah. about $750 million. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just, uh, just looking at the outstanding euro bonds that we do have currently, mm -hmm. we have about $6.85 billion uh, in euro bonds. That equates to about 13.3% of our total debt. Um, given that our total debt is about over 5 trillion uh, shillings. Mm, 5.4 trillion, yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. Um, so with that, uh, what we're seeing is our debt to GDP is about 55%. Mm -hmm. Our debt service to revenue is about 38%. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's definitely increasing. It's definitely increasing and um, it's causing some sort of... Um, uh, it's affecting us in regard to how we're looked at internationally. Yeah. Uh, but I think one of the key drivers that we did see uh, why the 2.1 was subs uh, the 2.1 billion euro bond was oversubscribed by over 450 percent. Yes. Was the hunt for yield, uh, more so than the stability of Kenya. I think uh, you're seeing investors uh, investors in different countries getting negative interest rates on their money, so they're investing. If you look at uh, such uh, certain like uh, Japan, I mean Japan, Germany, in terms of the bonds, you're seeing negative yields. So for some firms, they have mandates in order to, they have fixed income mandates to get higher yields. And Kenya, given the stability of Kenya, I believe Kenya is one of the stable countries. If you look at foreign reserves, if you look at the uh, effect stability, if you look at the fiscal deficit as well as current account deficit mm -hmm. and the growth trajectory of the country, it's in a good place and mm -hmm. political stability is there. Mm -hmm. So it's one of the uh, proper functioning countries that say that mm -hmm. was issuing your euro bond this year. Mm -hmm. So and then they're giving seven to seven percent, eight percent on the euro bond. So that's quite attractive on the dollar, mm -hmm. given that you're seeing the ten year treasury at about uh, two percent levels. Mm -hmm. So I think 
there is more there's more room uh, for the government to be able to borrow because as the budget comes in they'll this is the deficit and they expect maybe a deficit of 6.8 to 7 percent so they'll have to fill that with both domestic and foreign, and foreign. borrowing yeah. and so the government i believe will continue borrowing and the idea is just to make it more sustainable and uh improve on certain aspects improve on your revenue collection mm -hmm. Um, make sure that and now those are the strategies that will um, make the state of the country's borrowing b a bit better. Better, yeah. Uh -huh. Improve on your revenue collection, yeah. which will make it uh, much better. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, make sure that the borrowing are actually going towards uh, economically viable projects. Mm -hmm. um, I know our recurrent, uh, recurrent expenditure is quite high, um, uh, but therefore there's still room for development expenditure, especially when it comes to the Big Four agenda, and that's mm -hmm. what sort of like, I believe will be the legacy for President Uru Kenyatta. Kenyatta. So uh, I believe the government will push for that, and therefore we sh I expect to see more borrowings mm -hmm. uh, as we, uh, along the lines in, from different uh, sources, from foreign as well as domestic. So expect borrowing to continue. But now what the government can do or what lever they can push, especially is when it comes to ta tax collection. Well, Charles, I, I, well, I don't think anyone has a problem with the borrowing. Yeah. Let's just, um, in layman's terms, yeah. we are borrowing this money. And um, uh, Metropole TV was able to do uh, sort of a research, especially when the Kenya was going for the third euro bond, yeah. when Treasury had already sent out their people to go and mm -hmm. yeah? So, um, there's a complaint that, regardless of the fact that we borrow, we, do, the, the, we don't see where the money is going, yeah? yeah? yeah. Where, where these projects are, or rather, even if there's a project like an infrastructural project, yeah. it doesn't come back, like the money does not come back properly yeah. as, uh, as opposed to something like agriculture. So what is the best strategy when it comes to paying back this money? Because right now, where we stand, we're, we're using, we're, we've just gotten a third euro bond to pay back another euro bond. So moving forward, what's the best way? I think the best way, uh, touching again, is if you could build up your uh, tax base. Um, tax base, I think, is one of the general ways in which the government is doing this. Um, if I can just give you an example of what we're seeing, for example, in Egypt, mm -hmm. um, where they've been able at least to... Uh, yes, the debt to GDP is, uh, is quite high, about 92%. But one of the key things that they've been able to do is introduce VAT, which they didn't have in the past, mm -hmm. and uh, also cut cut on subsidies um, that government uh, that they're offering to electricity, uh, both fuel and electricity. Mm -hmm. So for us in these counties, two things we can do: improve revenue or cut expenditure, mm -hmm. and. Given that the interest payments that they are predictable, right? We already know that X date, uh, at X period, we are going to at Y period we're going to pay a certain amount of interest, some certain amount of principal on the debt. So for us, what we can do is work on our expenditure. Where can, where is there excess costs and which can be cut? And uh, and if, if we can find that, for example, maybe the excess um, um, subsidies that we're working with that. Uh, are they really pushing for foreign direct investments? If they're not directly leading to more uh, investments uh, within the various industries that we do have in the country, then that's a place that we should look at, at cutting. And therefore, uh, and also improving, and that will have an impact in improving our tax base overall. You know? yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That was Charles Miano, an analyst from Nabu Capitals. That's it for markets today, this evening, my name is Nene Shiban. I'll be back at 7 p.m. with our 7 p.m. bulletin. We have lots of stories lined up for you, so don't change the channel.